I can already start with outside. Mm -hmm. So this is a PrestQT workshop one. PrestQT means preservation quality tool. And as John already said, we have four Chrome PIs and we are partnering with the Center of Open Science on this project. And we are normally not using Windows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so the motivation for this project ca came from different perspective also. On the one hand side, not only from the library's point of view, but also that funders nowadays ask people to have really a data plan for their projects. To say, okay, you have a data preservation, a software preservation plan, and researchers are not normally, or a lot of researchers are not used to that. So they're a little bit reluctantly reacting on that. And it's really a work-intensive job if you're not considering it from the beginning. Thank you. Oh, make sure it's coming. There we go. And also our remote. The remote actually sees the um, presenter party. That's okay. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Just nothing. <Okay>. <laughs> so <laughs> the motivation I already started this was so researchers often really respond reluctantly and retroactively to funder and publisher mandates for data and software sharing. And it's really quite labor intensive. If you don't plan it from the beginning in a project, if you consider like a lot of projects are two years, three years, four years, or even five years. And if you don't consider that at the beginning and you have to do everything at the end of a project, it's, it's really labor intensive. So we need to have metadata enhancement for different research domains and provenance re reconstruction or reformatting a data documentation. And um, so these can be significant significant barriers to timely and complete data sharing. And so curators like the libraries are engaged often only near the end of the research data life cycle and receive incomplete metadata or at risk formats and a paucity of data documentation. And also the reuse and reproducibility of research is jeopardized because if you cannot or you don't preserve your data or your software to create reproducibility and tell other communities that they can also start these tools and data and reuse it, and you haven't preserved it in the right way, there's a problem. So with PressQT, we try to bridge this gap between existing digital library infrastructures, repository and software reuse. So the current life cycle of research projects so it's fantastic, you get funding. It's a new project. <laughs> yeah. So, and then you have the selection development maybe of tools, or you assemble data and create data, and you have already to do some reports maybe, annual reports, and that at the end, as I said, after three, four, five years, you think about preservation of data. And that's often work intensive and too late in the life cycle and then the funding ends. So what we suggest is directly to start at the beginning, assure the quality of data if you select a tool or develop a tool. Or if you assemble data, that you also assure quality of this data. And then it should be ideally such an easy step at the end to preserve it. So PressQT is really a planning grant. So what we got was for, for one and a half years, um, funds to, to bring really the community together and to address needs for preserving data and software. So, and we want to collaboratively design this interoperability and interoperable and repository agnostic data and software preservation quality too. And as John already mentioned, we, we have the funding from the Institute of Museum and Libraries and we hope that we keep it. You might have heard that IMLS might be not be in the existing in a couple of months anymore. So we have to be fast. <laughs> so <laughs> we should work on it now. So, and um, our other partner, so Jeff Spies is also here, is the Center of Open Science and it's working with us on this. So, Jeff, maybe you want to, yeah, stand up. <laughs> so, 
he will also talk later today. And he will be the whole day here for questions if you have questions for him. So this is our website. Um, and we describe the, the goals. We get information about the workshops, about the state, which resources we have. All the resources will point also to um, OSF, so Open Science Framework. So everything will be openly accessible. And um, Rick will talk about that later and point you to the right resources. The important goal is here really to say we want to better represent digital workflow methodologies, improve data and software provenance, automatically enhance metadata. And we have a couple of more topics and now you will think like that is so much to do and you have one and a half years of time. How do you do that? And the goal is to openly design a quality tool library using standards. And now you think like, oh, what kind of tool she's talking about, a library, the building? The, no, <laughs> I talk really about a software framework, about APIs that we can share, that we can design together. We don't implement them in this project yet. So, but we want that this library software framework can be integrated with workflow engine tools and containers. And everyone can take it at the end, after one and a half years, and write their own proposals in different countries. Uh, and building on this work and implement it for certain projects. So we want as many as possible um, communities involved, and that everyone is, you cannot get everyone happy, but um, that everyone is happy with the design or can see really that there's a nice function about it. So this collaborative effort we are at the moment in the grant period. So we have all these different stakeholders we mentioned here. We have domain researchers, data curators, repository managers, librarians, software developers, work, workflow tool developers, linked data community, and even journals. So we have them all participating in, in this effort. And we are at the moment at the first workshop. And we have created a survey. So Natalie will go into detail for the survey. And then, <laughs> and uh, so we have two workshops. One workshop is really for, that is today here and tomorrow, uh, to say, what do we need? What are we looking at? And the next workshop will be in the fall where we say, how do we design it now? So we come together again and say, okay, we got the what, now let's think about the how and make really a design, a document about it. As I said, not the implementation itself, we will write reports, we will write a paper, and then we want this open source tool, suite, framework, however we want to call it, library, not the building, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and that everybody can work with this design we create all together. That's, that's the goal. And in the timeline, you will see why I said we have to speed up, we have to get a result out of the difference. So we will make the outcome analysis of this workshop and of the survey. We will distribute the survey and we will ask you really also to support us there to distribute it further so that people are aware of it. And we write our report then into the middle of the year and the next workshop in the fall. And then we have a design and everybody can build on that. So your participation in our grant will continue with Rick. Welcome everyone, I'm Rick Johnson for those that don't know me. So we're so talking a little bit about, what, again, more about why you're all here. Uh, really looking at the landscape of what is happening with software preservation, data preservation. It's very clear that there's never going to be any one tool that's going to solve every problem, all these kinds of things. So, so really in looking at this grant, we're looking at it not necessarily to build one master tool that will solve everything, but, but a big part of why we're bringing all of you together is really to surface more and more the kinds of things that we need to have working together, interoperation, et cetera. So a lot of this is really gathering information on that landscape as, as, as Sandra and, and, and John and Natalie have said, uh, and then really to look at what kinds of workflows 
do we really need to have to, to invest in these? And then also if there are gaps, or, you know, we, we anticipate there will be gaps and then we're looking to start to fill in some of those gaps as well. So in terms of your participation, so, so this is, well, I would be very, very upfront, this is an open grant. So a big part of this is making sure that all the materials around this grant, around this workshop, et cetera, are open. So we've created a, a, a project within the open science framework that has made everything open access within that. So everything within the, this workshop, materials, et cetera, is all gonna be shared on the grant. And, and for those that are presenting, thank you for all submitting your, your talks. Uh, you'll get an invitation to submit something to the project and I'll, and I'll actually go through the steps in a second here about how you can upload your presentation if you have. And I think we actually have most of them up there at this point. So there may only be a, a, a couple or so to fill in. So I wanted to show quickly the, the link to the project, overall project on the open science framework for our grant in general. So everything that we'll do will be or is, is currently placed and will be placed uh, in this project on the USF. And this presentation is actually shared with our workshop as well. So you'll be able to get to that uh, for links. So you don't have to scribble, scribble away those things too quickly. Uh, then also underneath there, so, so within the, the open science framework, there's the concept of projects and then components or subprojects. So you'll see on the bottom right there, there's the notion of the PressQT May 1 workshop. So I'm actually going to drill down here and, and see what that looks like. So we have, for example, your speaker slides a link there already. And if you haven't submitted those yet, uh, actually all you have to do is go to this link, the osf.io slash view slash PressQT1 and there's instructions on how to submit your talk. It's actually very simple. You just send an email to that address with information and it'll automatically get uploaded to the site. So it's really nice. It's using the, one of the things within the Open Science Framework has a, has a Open Science OSF for meetings, which is using for this. So, it's, so it's, it works really nice for this. And then go, going, in, going forward, so in terms of what you can upload, it doesn't have to be just presentations, files. One of the things I wanted to, to highlight is all the various things that the OSF integrates with. So if you have various code you want to link to that's on GitHub, you can do that. Uh, pretty much every, every thing that's on this list, as well as other things that probably have not made it into this slide yet because there's new, new plugins being added to the OSF all the time. But really the, the point here is that don't think about just limiting it to presentation slides, documents, et cetera, really any kind of information uh, that you have, we can go ahead and link to from the OSF. Actually, I couldn't just scroll down here. Okay. okay. All right. So looking at the, our schedule, we are excited to have a lot of very nice folks that have come to uh, present on various systems, tools, efforts, workflows going on. So, so we're really excited to to get a lot of people talking uh, at the workshop. That's really the point of this, is to get as many people talking, not just to listen, but the point is to start thinking about all the various things happening around us and to see and to find the connections and see really where we can continue to work better together. So, so within the schedule today, it's a, it's a, we have main talks uh, and then going into lightning talks and then some more lightning talks later on in the afternoon. And then tomorrow we'll have more lightning talks and then also some breakouts uh, as well. So we're really excited about the day and a half or two days ahead now. Uh, so welcome.